Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Pete Maravich Assembly Center here on the campus of LSU. Game two of the Baton Rouge Regional on the first day here has come to an end as LSU gets the wind over Hawaii by the score of 73 to 50. To my immediate left is Hawaii head coach Laura Beaming. We'll hear from her in just a second. To her left is Lily Wahinikapu. 11 points, 6 rebounds, 3 assists on today's game. And on the far end of the table, uh, Callan Spiller, 13 points, 5 rebounds for today's game. We will start with an opening comment from Coach Beeman, and then we will have questions for the two players only, and then we will excuse them, and we'll go back to have questions for Coach. So with that, Coach, the floor is yours. Yeah, uh, first off, I want to thank LSU and the NC2A for just hosting an amazing event. The hospitality has been incredible. Um, I also want to share that Col Coach Mulkey was just unbelievably complimentary um, towards these kids, our program. Um, I wish them well in the tournament. Uh, she just had some really great things to say. She was just a class act, and I appreciate her because that doesn't always happen. Um, so thank you, Coach. As far as our team, it, you know, I thought we did a pretty good job on the boards. Um, turnovers got us, you know, the amount of points they were able to score off our turnovers. Um, I think what it came down to is when big shots had to be made, they made big shots and we missed shots when we had wide open looks. And to beat a team, the quality of LSU, you have to hit wide open shots. And we just didn't do that. Um, you know, I'm incredibly proud of these girls. Uh, tough environment to come play, 10,000 people, but it was fun. Uh, this team has not quit all year long. Um, they have just fought adversity on head on all year in our tournament was a reflection of that. I thought today they played outstanding. Um, we're going to continue to advance in this tournament. Games like this, situations like this only help us get there. Um, yeah, just incredibly proud of this group. All right, Coach, thank you very much. We'll have questions for Coach again in just a moment. Right now, if you have questions for either Lily or Callan, please raise your hand if you're here in person. We will bring a microphone to you since this press conference is being streamed. Also, if you are joining us via Zoom, as I do see we have at least three or four from Hawaii, so welcome. Uh, if you have questions, please hit the raise hand button on your Zoom screen, and we will try our best to get to you. And with that, if you have questions for the players, please raise your hand. Uh, for both Lily and Callan, coming into the game, you guys want to play Hawaii basketball held them to 48 through third, three quarters right there with the rebounds. Is this the type of performance that you at least wanted to have on the night? Um, yes and no. Like Coach B said, we could have hit shots more when we were open and um, minimized the turnovers. I think that really got to us. Um, but, yeah, we can definitely do better than what we did today. But I'm so proud of my girls. Definitely echoing Lily. I think it was really exciting to see those moments where we stuck together as a team, continued to fight through adversity as we have all season. And I personally feel like my teammates and I really left it all on the court. Yes, there were a couple shots that we wish would have fallen or some defensive stops we wish we could have gotten. But um, hats off to LSU. It's a super, a great program that's going to make a deep run in this tournament. And I'm really proud of what our team was able to show today. Both uh, girls. 10 and four down the stretch. This run was something that kind of came out of nowhere for everyone covering this team, especially the last two weeks. What are you most proud of? Um, the heart that we have. We're never giving up. We're playing the whole 40 minutes, the entire game, giving all we have. Mm -hmm. Same thing. When something new happened to us, when we just thought we'd gotten past the next something else, something else popped up. And so seeing that heart, seeing we were able to stick together, still have fun, and really pull together a string of wins that I think no one expected for us to get after everything was really exciting. Um, but it was really the fun along the way, too. I loved going out and playing with my teammates every single day, and I'm going to miss that. Um, Callan, for you, you know, um, last two seasons here in UH, um, two times in March Madness. For you, just kind of retrospectively looking back, you know, what are you personally most proud of when you can look back at your time here at Hawaii and what you've been able to do? You know, personally, I just feel honored that Coach B gave me the chance to come and be a leader in her program. Um, and, you know, before pro Hawaii's been a strong program, they've always been, um, you know, on my radar even before I came here. But to say that we were able to kind of finish the job for the first time since 2016, get to back-to-back -back tournament championships, I'm personally really proud to say that, you know, I feel like I gave my heart and soul to this program and to see that, you know, it's better than where it was when I started, you know, keeping that fight. And I'm really proud to have been a part of this run. Um, and then my last one uh, for Lily, you know, coming into the program this season and, um, you know, talking about the, the run you guys went on down the stretch and how you guys started the year. For you, you know, what does this game and this experience do for you and, and the rest of the girls coming back knowing, um, you know, now it's the off season and building up towards next year? What does that do for you all? Yeah, this was a really cool experience playing against some of the top girls in the nation. 
And um, I feel like this game, I learned a lot from this game on what I need to work on and um, my weaknesses. And just being in this environment with uh, like 10,000 plus people, something new. So yeah. This is for Lily. Did you all have a particular strategy for dealing with Alexis Morris on the perimeter? It, she seemed to not have uh, the type of game she usually does. Um, yeah, we know she's a three-level scorer, but she hit some tough shots, some pull-ups. She won that run in, in the fourth quarter, I think, and it got to us a little bit. Yeah. Hey there, it's uh, Brett Martell with AP. Um, Kaylin, I just you mentioned LSU probably making a deep run in the tournament. I just wonder if you can go in a little detail as to to why you think that. You know, I think today it's really clear they have great guards, they have great posts. They're really a full team that are able to do everything. You know, personally, um, guarding Angel Reese was difficult. Guarding Ladeja was difficult. You know, they're at the top of this game for a reason. And you know, as a post who's really focused on rebounding, I know how hard it is to collect those double doubles at the level she does. And um, Coach Mulkey's done a great job with this program. And being against them, it's clear that they're going to make a run. And playing them, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for them, for the ones that knocked us out. I'm hoping they go far. Two players. If not, we'll let them go back to the locker room. Anybody else? We're clear online. Okay, Lily Callen, congratulations on your season. Thank you very much for your time here. Okay, now we'll turn your attention for any questions uh, for Coach Beeman as we let the players get out. Congratulations, girls. Uh, Mike Scarborough with uh, Tiger Bait. Um, Alexis Morris, do y'all have a specific game plan for her to follow up on that question? And second part, uh, the way Caitlin conducts herself, any chance she might be a coach one day? <laughs> I hope I'm retired if she becomes a coach and I don't have to coach against her. Um, no, I think she's going to do something different in, in her life. But whatever direction that young lady goes, she will be very, very successful. Uh, she's, she's a top-notch kid. Um, as impressive in the classroom as she is here today and on the court. I can promise you that. You know, we had to get in gaps. We, we knew that we had to get in gaps because of what, you know, Morris could do getting downhill. And you have to pick your poison with a team that is as, as talented as LSU. We knew we weren't going to stop Reese. We just had to try to do as good a job on her as we could on boards, make her touches outside the paint as much as possible, make her work a little bit. But with Moores, we just tried to get in gaps so that she couldn't get downhill on us and then tried to put the ball in other people's hands and make them score. Uh, Scott Rapolay with the Baton Rouge Advocate. I know you may answer this question and say, well, we didn't win the game, so it didn't work. But was your game plan pretty much, I mean, did you do a lot of the things that you wanted to do? It looked like you were, you were working the clock down, trying to shorten the game. And as you said, one of the defensive things you did against Morris, I mean, did a lot of those things work? It just their talent and, and depth got you? Yeah, you know, I think that, again, Reese is going to get what she gets. You know, she's going to go number one, number two in, in WNBA. You know, we, we don't have a pro on our team right now. So um, I think it gets, it, against uh, Morris it was a little bit effective. I think letting some of the other players shoot and have to make big shots was effective. You know, it wasn't necessarily our game plan to run the clock down. It was what they did defensively that kind of caused that at times. We couldn't get, in, we couldn't get downhill, and we couldn't drive and kick, and they closed so quickly that when we thought we would have shots, they were right there in our face, and we had to just continue to drive and kick and try to get them in more rotation. So it wasn't our game plan to run the clock down. It was our game plan to get and hunt for great shots. Um, they make that very, very difficult. You know, I think that – when we took great shots, didn't turn the ball over, we were able to get back in transition. And when you can stop this team's transition, make them play in the half court, then maybe you stand a chance. You know, I know they average 84 points a game. We held them below that average, and I'm pretty proud of my kids for that. So, you know, it was don't get killed on the boards. Um, you know, we had to put body on body on body on Reese and others and try to stop their transition as best we could by taking great shots and not turning the ball over. Uh, Coach, we have a question. With Spectrum News in Hawaii, Brian, if you would please unmute on your end and ask your question for Coach Beeman. Hey, Coach B, uh, congrats on a great season. Um, what's your thought on how this run you guys put together late in the year might carry into this offseason and, and be perhaps a, a touchstone of sorts heading into next year? Brian, I don't know if it's sunk in yet. I think when it does, I'm probably going to cry for a while. Um, this has been an emotional up-and-down season with the injuries we've had. Um, 
you know, losing games we didn't think we were supposed to lose, you know, then going on a run, you know, being down in the tournament and having May have to hit a big shot. Um, you know, I think everyone needs to reflect a little bit. Everyone needs to just be really thankful for each other on our team, and we do celebrate each other every single day. I think that's really important. I think once we all sit and talk, we'll, we'll come up with a game plan um, of how to continue to build our skill. You know, these women that we played against tonight are highly skilled. They're three-level scorers. They do things defensively and with speed that we don't have. And if we need to continue to advance in the tournament, we have to continue to grow our skill um, and our skill set. So this is a little bit of motivation for those that are returning. Um, I definitely think that they will dwell or, excuse me, draw on this experience in that moment of I don't want to get in the gym. I think it's going to be, wait, I need to get in the gym. Um, that's just the type of team they are. So, but right now, I, I don't know if it's sunk in yet. This has been a crazy season. Hey, Coach, Charles Salzer. Wanted to ask you about that fourth quarter. I know in the conference uh, championship game, you guys mounted a, a comeback. Uh, what was the feeling on the team going into the fourth quarter uh, today? You know, I told them the same thing. I said, I'm really bad at math, but I think we're about six or seven baskets down. I said, we've been here before. And they laughed. And I said, guys, we've been here. Let's just chip away. Stop, score, stop. This is a great team, but we have to get back to not turning the ball over, taking great shots. we got to get on the boards. I said, right now, you know, offensively, we're just we're, – we're, we're not taking care of the ball for a while. Um, and then we, hit, we had some open shots. We just didn't hit them. And, and that's a little bit of the difference when you're playing against the top caliber teams in the country. They hit big shots. We had wide open shots and kids just couldn't put it down. Um, so back to Brian's question, I know I have a lot of kids that are going to get on our gun this summer and take a lot of shots. Well, when you called the timeout, I believe there was about uh, three minutes left. Uh, what was your message at that point? You know, at that point it was pretty loud, obviously, in the stadium, and the hand signals that we had were working pretty well, but we wanted to script three or four plays to say, let's try these, and we knew a couple we thought we could get good looks. We did. Again, we just didn't hit the shots, but it was more, okay, let's last push, let's close this gap. Maybe we can't win this game, but we can bring it within 15, 19, something like that, hopefully 15, um, and the shots just didn't fall. Thank you. Are there any other questions here? One more over here in the front with Scott. Right here, please. Coach, I saw the biggest crowd you played in front of this year was like 3,600 at Oregon State, so this was about three times that. Just, it can be intimidating, but it can be uplifting too. What did you think of the atmosphere today? For your it, was, it was amazing. Um, I wish our kids could play in front of this every single night. Um, it, it's special when you can play in front of a sold-out crowd. I, I don't think it intimidated the kids. Even when we had to call that timeout, I think they were like, wow, this many, you know, this many people are here. They're watching us too, and we're playing good basketball. And so, uh, you know, it, it testament to the community here to get out and support these young women like this. It's phenomenal. Um, but I think my kids loved it. I know I did. It was fantastic. And hopefully we can continue to grow our program in Hawaii and, you know, maybe one day get a sellout like this. It would be fantastic. Anything else? We'll clear online. Coach, it's been a pleasure meeting you. Congratulations on your season. Thank you very much for your time. You as well. Thank we you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, Laura. All right, we will reset here in Baton Rouge. When we come back, we will hear from head coach Kim Mulkey and some of the LSU players about today's win over Hawaii as LSU is now set to face Michigan in round two here in the Baton Rouge Regional. We'll reset and be back with you right after this.